Today on Timescast. The borders of Israel and Palestine should be based on the 1967 lines with mutually agreed swaps so that secure and recognized borders are established for both states. In his speech on the unfolding political changes in the Mideast, President Obama outlines his vision for a Palestinian state. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu immediately rejects key parts of the plan just one day before arriving in Washington. And the speech gets mixed reaction in Cairo. Because the situation now is, uh, is just getting worse and worse economically. President Obama's speech tonight, uh, in which he laid out an American endorsement for a solution to the Palestinian-Israeli dispute based on the 1967 lines, caused an enormous reaction both in Israel and among the Palestinians. Israelis who follow the peace process and who are in favor of a two-state solution, some of them express great satisfaction. Yossi Balin, who was very involved in the peace process before, called it a, a milestone, an important speech, uh, because of the 67 borders uh, line suggestion. Among average Palestinians, there was enormous skepticism. Uh, people in uh, refugee camps and in the villages and towns of the West Bank who watched it basically said, Obama talks well, but we don't believe he's going to do anything for us. We're waiting to see if anything comes from this. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who is about to get on an airplane for a five-day visit to the United States, is to meet tomorrow with President Obama privately in the White House. He issued a statement before getting on the plane saying while he appreciated the president's endorsement of many things that uh, mattered to Israel, he now expected an endorsement of a 2004 letter uh, that President Bush offered Israel, uh, which said that he did not expect uh, Israel to retreat ultimately and fully to the 1967 lines. So there is going to be tension tomorrow when uh, the president and the prime minister meet in the White House. There's a deadline in this dispute, which is September, when the Palestinian Authority has uh, threatened to go to the United Nations General Assembly and ask for membership in order to create a legal dispute, official international legal dispute between Israel uh, and the Palestinians in terms of Israel's occupation. Part of the goal of this speech was to avoid that process and to try to get the two sides back together. Through the moral force of nonviolence, the people of the region have achieved more change in six months than terrorists have accomplished in decades. President Obama tried to put the period of conflict with the Arab world behind him with his speech at the State Department today. He said the wars are over, bin Laden is dead, and then he talked a great deal about the Arab Spring and the rising up of ordinary people to topple dictators and autocratic leaders. He talked a lot about values in a speech that was high on rhetoric and initially rather short on specifics. Then the president tried to talk about the concrete ways in which the United States will support the continued development of democracy within the region. He threw out some modest economic proposals, including forgiving about a billion dollars in debt to Egypt. We do not want a democratic Egypt to be saddled by the debts of its past. So we will relieve a democratic Egypt of up to $1 billion in debt. Egypt has tremendous economic problems, and it's not clear that this is going to be enough to actually win plaudits, particularly in Egypt at this time. However, I'm sure it's already being seen as a positive first step, as a, the statement of commitment to Egypt at a time of difficult transition. But if America is to be credible, we must acknowledge that, at times, our friends in the region have not all reacted to the demands for consistent change. The president had a credibility issue in his speech because of the issue of Bahrain, the tiny Persian Gulf Kingdom that had a popular uprising that has been completely crushed with the declaration of martial law and the acquiescence of the United States. What the president tried to say is even in Bahrain, where we are friendly with the king, where we have our, the Navy has its fifth fleet based, we would like to see them shift away from oppression and move towards democracy. Nevertheless, we have insisted both publicly and privately that mass arrests and brute force are at odds with the universal rights of Bahrain citizens. What the president did at the end of his speech was he focused specifically on Israel and Palestine because despite all the talk of democracy and need for reform, the cornerstone issue in this region is absolutely the Israeli-Palestinian issue. This is David Bauti reporting for the New York Times in Cairo. 
At around 6 p.m. local time, reporters and editors at the Daily News Egypt newspaper gathered to watch President Obama's address. No one expected anything monumental from the speech. They were skeptical the majority of Egyptians would even watch. Even when it was over, many here said they didn't want to hear words but see action. Usually I think President Obama's speeches have more of a, an emotional impact uh, than, than anything else. And then, you know, we just have to see what, what is going to be done on the ground, you know, based on that speech. Any general ideas about freedoms in the region, uh, cooperation, changing tactics, are still, at the end of the day, are still talk. Still nothing, unless there are actions to back them up. The staff at this independent English-language newspaper is mostly young, socially conscious journalists. Throughout the paper's six-year history, they've contended with the difficulties of reporting under the former ruling regime and joined in the swelling national pride as January's revolution gained strength. But some felt President Obama took too much credit for changes in the Middle East. The, the first part was a bit of a wrap-up of you know, what happened in, in the region the past six months and it was kind of felt like the U.S. was trying to like wedge a role for itself um, in the context of you know the recent developments when it didn't really have one. There was one bright spot for the staff in the speech, a pledge of economic incentives and partnerships for Egypt. The most concrete part about it was the possible debt relief for Egypt and uh, uh, proposed you know, borrowing for Tunisia and Egypt, which could uh, help economically, but at the same time a lot of activists and economists oppose you know, international help. Uh, we need you know, young people to have jobs, and if, if young people still don't have jobs in, in, in the very short term, I think you know, th this revolution is going to be... Um, heading towards a disaster scenario because the situation now is uh, is just getting worse and worse economically.